Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Beautiful sunny day in South Florida. Hopefully there's no storms where you are. And we have a few people coming in on time, but we're going to get started anyway. My name is Michael Price, and I'll be your presenter for today's 30-minute information-packed webcast. Again, welcome to everyone. For the record, those of you who have not attended one of our webcasts before, as I said, my name is Michael Price. I am the oldest GSA consultant alive I've worked on the beta teams with GSA, been in government contracting since long before I care to remember, actually in the 70s. Why do I do this? I enjoy seeing people succeed. And I was extremely fortunate my first time out of the proverbial chute before we had the internet, fax machines were still new. There was no email, and we had to do things the old-fashioned way. You had to pick up the phone and call someone. And I made one phone call, and for the most part, that changed my life forever. I called Michael Dell, August 12, 1986, and I think you all know the end of that story. So to sum up this introduction, experience matters. And I thank you for your trust and absorbing the information that I'm going to give you today. What can you expect out of today's agenda? As you know, we're going to discuss woman-owned small business, which is very neglected, unfortunately, and I'm going to put an end to that today. We have our first question. Roberta, thank you. Will the webinar be available on your website? Yes, ma'am. Hopefully, if I don't make any mistakes, It'll be up within an hour. And while we're on the subject, in your control panel, under the view option, you should see a check mark next to the word handouts. And if you scroll down to the bottom of your control panel, you'll be able to download today's slides, which are already there and waiting for you. There was so much information today, and we're restricted to the number of handouts we can make available. I chose to only give you the slides, but there are numerous links throughout those slides which will get you the full context and further explanation of exactly what we're discussing today. We're going to talk about woman-owned small business certification, how to register. We already know why it benefits you. That's why you're here. And something that we discussed in the 8A webcast two, three weeks ago, how to get funding for your business. We never have enough money. I don't care how rich you are. There's just never enough money. But I learned one thing from a very wise man years ago. If you start a business to make money, you will fail. If you start a business to help people, you will become rich and a lot of people will be helped. What is woman-owned small business? Well, as the name suggests, that's pretty simple. The good news is the government has stepped in and made it a priority that 5% of all government-obligated dollars for procurement be allocated towards woman-owned small businesses. This all really came about in 2011. The SBA stepped in and mandated that we had to start taking advantage and giving an advantage to two sectors, woman-owned small business and economically disadvantaged woman-owned small businesses. That one I didn't know about, so I'm a little behind the time sometimes. What are the benefits? We always hear a level playing field 
but it never happens. As a service disabled Vietnam vet, I talk to vets all the time. We just can't get a break. And I can imagine that woman owned small business has the exact same complaints. We can't get a break. That needs to change. The key is, and the caveat is the industries that are involved. There's a link there in your slides for the eligible industries. Don't panic. It's going to cover almost everything. The key is to join the contracting program as quickly as possible. In the next few slides, I'm going to show you exactly how to do it, where to go, and get it done. The requirements. Well, it's pretty much the same with veteran-owned, service-disabled veteran-owned, hub zone, 8A, Native American. Pick any of the, the classes of requirement to be able to take advantage of the set-asides. It has to be 51% owned and controlled by one or more women. So if you have a partner and you two are 50-50, that's 100%, even though it shows 50-50 or 49-51, however you want to do the math. But if there are two women, three women controlling the company, you're good to go. You have to be small. Depending upon the NAICS code, which by the way, we're going to do a webcast on that before long. NAICS codes are going away. The government is shifting towards product service codes, which doesn't make any sense if you're a service business. So they call it a product service code, but it's really a procurement service code that covers both that acronym is switching over to the procurement side rather than the product side if you're economically disadvantaged you can look that up on the size standards and within the SBA and you can find out if you qualify for economically disadvantaged I'll give you a hint if you're an 8A, you automatically qualify, which gives you another feather in your cap. In order to qualify, I'd like to let you read it really quick before I run through it. Let's go down to bullet number two. Each, if you have more than one woman controlling the business, each must have a net worth less than $750,000. Well, I could probably retire on $750,000. Your adjusted gross income, three fifty dollars or less. I believe with 8A, it's two fifty dollars or less. So you may run into a little bit of a hurdle if you are an 8A and you want to qualify as a woman-owned small business. If you can keep that around two fifty. dollars you're good to go. If I had $6 million in assets, we wouldn't be having this conversation today. I guarantee it. Before I go any further, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to type them in. It'll stop me. I'll answer the question because chances are you had the question based on something you were reading or something I was saying. So, Let's keep it fresh in your mind and my mind and get whatever question you've got answered right away. You have to prove eligibility. Now, what you're going to see in the next couple of slides is there's two ways to certify. You can self-certify and you can have the government certify. Both of them are acceptable. However, it's one thing to have a learner's permit. It's another thing to have a driver's license. I think you get the point I'm trying to make. Contracting officers are looking for more woman-owned businesses to do business with. But you need to educate yourself. You all have a SAM record. That's the reason you're here. Now, I need to do a quick plug for our next webcast, which will be all about the GSA Smart Pay program. And it's not just for GSA contracts. GSA manages the program for accepting credit cards. Now, I like doing statistical analysis whenever I get a moment. 
which is not very often. Almost 65% of all companies registered on SAM do not accept credit cards. I get complaints all the time. I'm registered on SAM. I can't get any business. You don't have a contract vehicle. You can't get a contract vehicle unless you accept credit cards. So there's a problem there. So you must be current on SAM. Make sure that now you start adding your PSC codes. And a lot of times you can find those based on whichever solicitation you're looking at, whether you're doing open market bidding, whether you've got a GSA contract, a VA contract, or you want to get either one, the PSCs are going to become the most important part of your SAM registration. It also says that you can self-certify. I still suggest you go through the process and get certified by the SBA. They have a new area of SBA called the general login system. It's a repository where all of you are going to end up sitting as part of woman-owned certification. They also believe that that determines whether or not we're dealing with honest contractors. With all the Google alerts and all the press that's been coming out of so-and-so got convicted of such and such and what's her name protested what's his name and all the other problems that are going on in the procurement community there is so much fraud out there they just figure the government's too big to catch them they have a new thing called computers they will catch you so if you're running an honest business you have nothing to worry about continue doing a good job give excellent service, and your business will thrive and grow. Here's a quick checklist. And those of you that can read the bottom left corner, you see we're on slide number 11 of 19. I'm trying to keep them short, trying to keep us at the 30-minute mark. And the only reason I will go over is because of questions. So if you've got them, let me have them. We all know about SAM, go into the GLS system, take a look at it, register, make sure everything's up to date, and nine times out of 10, they're gonna read your SAM record anyway. So make sure that is always up to date. My suggestion, if you're within 90 days of the anniversary expiration of your SAM record, update it. Doesn't matter if you update it every month. There are people that do that. I see it all the time. The government sends me the updates every single morning and I see those who have expired, those who are back on the, on the radar, and those who have just updated. Get certified. There's a link to the website, certified.sba.gov. You, once you've got your profile updated with SAM, again, I suggest adding your PSCs now the best you can. You can always update them, add, subtract, whichever you want to do. Just make sure you've got it updated. You are going to need to update your certification every year. My suggestion would be keep it around the same time you do SAM. Self-certification, you can also self-certify. Your business structure, if you're already participating in any SBA program, 8A, whichever. 8A used to be the king. 1996, the SBA and GSA got together and said, why don't we take all of these groups and allow the agencies to get their procurement credits, small business credits, by using GSA, and that's why it all rolled right into the GSA contract and VA contract later on, as opposed to waiting three months to try to do a 
SBA 8A sole source contract. It just didn't work out. I've done them many, many times in the 80s, and it's brutal. There's also a preparation checklist for you, so you know exactly what you're going to need. While you're in that SBA site, you can also switch over. I believe the left panel will take you over to 8A, Hub Zone, all of the various entities that can qualify under SBA to get set aside contracts. Any questions so far? Don't be shy. What about funding? When I did the 8A webcast a few weeks ago, I didn't realize that there was so many options for financial assistance through the SBA. Very interesting. The old adage is, don't go to a bank for a loan. If you need the money, you'll never get it. If you don't need it, they're kissing your feet to make you take money. It still holds true today. The SBA has a site for lender match. It's almost like, uh, I can't remember the sites now for shopping, for financing, for a car, for a mortgage, or anything like that. Pretty much done the same way, lender match. There's also SBA guaranteed loans. If those of you that don't understand or don't know about the 7A program, if you're buying your office building or the 7J program, which I believe we have a slide on that today, the SBA will guarantee 20% of the loan, which takes most of the risk away from the lender. If anybody's gotten a home mortgage, you always have to put down 20%. But the fact that the SBA guarantees it, whole different ballgame. Small business investment companies. You don't hear much about them anymore. They're privately owned and managed. They have investors. But the good news is they're regulated by the government. It's wonderful. You can also learn about it at the link that's listed there. Any questions? I'll let you digest this slide very quickly. We're pretty much finished and going to be just about on time like I always want to be. Remember, you can download the slides at any time from your handout section. And the webcast will be available on the website hopefully within about an hour or so. Here's a private question that came in about GSA and VA. I get the same question pretty much every time. It's just worded differently. GSA and VA are pretty much the easiest contracts to be able to get. And what's the difference between open market procurement and doing a GSA or VA contract? And for the record, VA has finally hollered uncle and they're now going to start bringing their three or four solicitations into the GSA fold for e-offer to make it more automated and make it a heck of a lot easier for us to be able to process the applications. The difference between GSA and VA and open market, open market is winner take all. GSA and VA is what's called multiple award. That means that you can have one for widgets, and I can have one for widgets. We could be offering the exact same product at the exact same price, but it's just a question of who is offering better value, who offers better customer service, who's geographically near wherever the agency is. It's been going on like this since day one that I know of. If you don't have a contract, be more than happy to discuss it with you after the webcast. If you do have one 
and you're scratching your head because your five-year renewal is coming up. And another caveat, VA contracts are 10 years and you start over. GSA contracts are five years with three potential five-year extensions, which gives you 20 years, then you start over. So there is no extension on a VA contract at the end of 10 years, you start over. And the good news is you can pretty much use the exact same documentation you used the first time. Hopefully that answers your question, Bill. Pretty much the same question worded differently. What is a GWAC? Government-wide acquisition contract. Anything that's put out on FedBizOps, those of you who attended the FBO webcast a few weeks back, you can go back to our website or on YouTube, either one, and view that, and you'll get a wealth of information. That is basically the winner-take-all. Navy Soup is one that comes to mind. Some of the other the networks with an X coming up. Uh, I mean, they're all... There are multiple vendors in that, but that's because those contracts are so huge. Under GSA and VA, the government promises nothing as far as revenue. It's up to you to go out and generate the revenue. We provide our clients with numerous tools so they know exactly who to talk to. Roberta, thank you again. How do you go about accepting credit cards? Roberta, do me a favor. When we're finished here, please register for next week's webcast. But I'm going to tell you about it before we go because I've got a couple of uh, links here coming up. So if you need help managing your contract, we're available to help you. And the reason why you're looking at such low pricing is because I lost a bet. I was betting that nobody would look at such a low price and say, well, why? Because we normally charge quite a bit more. But it's summer and the codes are limited time codes. So take advantage of it if you can. Here's some links for you. Now, the link says, do I qualify for a GSA contract? If you're thinking about a VA contract, just put slash VA behind that. We'll probably change the website to show it. If you are interested in possibly finding out more, you can use the Getting Started link and we can set up a free consultation for you. Why does experience matter? Take a look at what we've been doing, some of the folks we've represented. Tiny ones and huge ones. Our upcoming webinar schedule, later this week, we're going to add five or six more to get it back fully populated again. And you can always look at our videos, which show you everything that we've done from today, moving backwards. Roberta, to address your question, there is a link on our website. You'll see that in the next slide, which I might as well give you right now. If you go to the website, you'll see a uh, flashing yellow banner and click on that. And I think they ask you three questions. And Greg, who will be our panelist uh, next week for uh, everything about credit cards. The links, Roberta, are in the slides that hopefully you've already downloaded in your handout section. If not, you can just peruse our website at the address shown there. Next question, anybody? Well, for a change, we're going to finish a little early. And let me see, I got another one just popped in here. Let me look at it to see what, uh, if I can decipher it. Yes, we have looked at 
putting together a learning management system so you can do online what you could do with having a tutor or a teacher, much the same way you, do. you can now do college, which is something I never got a chance to do because of that little conflict that got in the way in the late 60s, early 70s. So hopefully that answers your question. Thank you for those kind words, Steve. Ladies and gentlemen, if there's no other questions, don't be shy. I only use first names, never use the last name. Happy to answer anything that you need. A lot of folks came in, got their handouts and took off, which is okay. They're probably the kind of folks that will say, I'd rather watch the video and be able to start and stop it when I want to. And that's perfectly fine also. All right. Oh, Roberta, I don't, you know, you must have been to some of our webinars before. What is the time frame of securing a government contract? Oh, that was Cynthia. Uh, hold on just a minute, Cynthia. Let me go back and take them in order. Do you have to be in business for a minimum amount of time before you can attempt to get a GSA, VA, or any contract? The answer is almost every single contract out there is two years. Comma. Asterisk. Roberta, how long have you been in business as a company? My guess is it's probably over two years. Let's assume you've only been in business a year. My next question to you is, how long have you been doing what you're doing? Now, that's kind of a nebulous question. However, let me explain. A few years back, I had a client that had been a IT consultant for 24 years. His accountant said, you really need to incorporate to protect yourself. And that was great, but he'd only been a LLC corporation. They're all the same, basically, in, in, the, in the eyes of being incorporated for eight months. GSA rejected him. And I said, wait a minute. He's been doing this 24 years, but he's been operating as a company for eight months. Why should he be penalized? So he did a write-up, which is much the same thing Roberta's going to do with her and her husband. Husband was a sole proprietor for 40 years under different names. Doesn't matter. One name, 100 names, doesn't matter. But now they're an LLC doesn't matter whether it's two days. The bottom line is, in order to pursue a government contract, you need to prove what's called past performance and financial stability. And if you can do that as a sole proprietor, which you've had to do for 40 years, you should be fine. Let's switch over to Cynthia. What's the time frame for securing a contract? <clears throat> That's like asking, why is there air? It has a timeline, which, and my favorite, my favorite uh, slam on the government is, the only thing that's consistent about GSA is their inconsistency. GSA says 120 days, you should have your contract award. Unless, comma, asterisk, you are trying to do something in the law enforcement field and Brenda says automatically, it's going to be about a year. We're so far behind. Well, IT used to be 30 to 45 days. Now it's 60 to 120 days. This time of year, forget it. If you submitted anything in the late June or July time frame for the end of the fiscal year, it's not going to happen because renewals are first, modifications are second, New offers are third. So to answer your question without me seeming like a total dummy is, I don't know. Depending upon how you can legally cheat. When I say the word cheat, I don't mean do something illegal. 
Do any of you have pending government business? Someone that says to you, if you had a contract, we could spend a lot of money with you. If you can answer that question yes, I can show you how you can get your contract award expedited because the squeaky wheel syndrome. If you have business waiting, GSA, for example, is greedy. They want that three quarters of 1% industrial funding fee. They say they don't operate that way, but that's their budget. That's how they operate. That's how they keep the center open. That's how they keep the computers running. When this all started in 1986 for me, I remember going down to GSA at 18th and F, walking into the shop. They had two computers to process all of the IT GSA schedules. Two computers. I believe they were the whopping fast, uh, what was it, uh, 286 processors, if any of you are old enough to remember that. And it was really kind of, kind of funny. Uh, Roberta, hopefully I answered your question. You should have no problem at all getting a contract. But why do you need one? The government can't do business just because you happen to have an office next door to their office. You have to have some sort of contract vehicle. I don't care what it is. I specialize in GSA and VA. Doesn't matter what it is. You have to have a contract vehicle. Now, we also discussed before about the micro-purchase threshold of $3,500. That's where credit cards come in. But the government can't continue to do those purchases. If you read the first two paragraphs on our website, you'll see it talks about the Competition and Contracting Act. You can't just continue buying $3,500 procurements. The internal auditor that audits the buyers and the agencies themselves will ask them a question as to why they're making all these small purchases rather than saving the government taxpayers money and doing it in a larger procurement. And they make them stop. Somebody's got their hand raised. Let's see who it is. see that okay we're good to go there I'm guessing that we are done here for the time being I certainly appreciate everybody's time showing up today I'm happy you're able to take 30 to 40 minutes out of your busy schedule if you have any questions I'll be available anytime today and hopefully we can uh, find a resolution to whatever issue or problem you've got and get you set on the straight and narrow path to generating more revenue for your company, which gives everybody a better, better life. Again, thank you so much for joining us and we'll see you next week for everything you ever wanted to know about credit cards.